Good evening and welcome. Lo program Blayumi tonight. Third night, lo this fala series Blayumi. From wherever where you watch, me like for say welcome lo you. Whether you inside lo one fala downlink site, lo province, or in and around Honyara, me like for say welcome lo you. Me also like for extending this welcome to you where you watch maybe from uh, abroad, or maybe you inside lo house blow you, inside lo comfort lo home blow you. And you tune in, come to this program, me like for say welcome, lo you. And for those of you where you view him come program here through social media, me also like for extend him a sincere welcome to you. Our program outlined for tonight, by you me blessed with a very special song from the mission team. And also, by you me listen, lo one for a presentation from Mr. Joseph Pitakia on the topic media and the Blu-ray, a very important topic, especially for parents, for you listen to him. Finally, Pastor David Philo, by him now presenting you me want a message, play me for tonight, entitled, The Final Empire. Stay one time, me fella, for this one hour, because me savvy that by you spiritually blessed. Before you me start, me like for asking me for closing eyes, play you, as you me pray. Father in heaven, me feel like for say thank you and giving you praise, honor, honor, and glory to your name. Tonight, we know that the Holy Spirit are here with us, the angels. Because me feel by a lot to you tonight, and me feel I need him you, for you stop one time, me feel amongst us. Bless us and bless the presenters for tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Searching for freedom, but couldn't find it anywhere. I try to ask a close friend of mine, but he couldn't tell. I'm so eager to find him, cause here I'm just like a slave. Searching for some place to be free and be safe. Yeah. 
As you would remember that the two nights when go, we concentrate on this very important you know, resources that we got them, and that is our children. Our children are the most important resources that we got them as a country. And because of that, their future has stopped our hands, believe me. And we must make sure that we invest well in the future of Lord beginning to believe me. And so an area that by me talk about is this one. And that is the health. Health blood beginning and very important. And you find them that Lord too last night, me concentrate on this area because me realizing that this is important for us, for him to talk about them. And one area that me like him for him to talk about this week is the impact of mass media, the brain. And this is an area me touch him. And the last night, he may come for talk about him now that there are concerns. Concerns that are raised by, you know, Parliament, Law UK. Concerns that are raised by doctors or people who specialize for treating or that were addicted to this. And there are concerns even raised by other artists over now this one. And so I mean, just like for same recap, no more, this one. Feeding children's brain with media without proper screening may not, after all, Healthy for our children. And that is important for me. As me mentioned him last night, that in Solomon Island, although, you know, he might talk about connectivity, I'm still not cast him every place. But as far as, you know, Asia Pacific region, I'm concerned in terms of the fastest growing penetration area of social mo uh, uh, mobile, he may come number eight in the country. And because of that, it's important for me to address him this as something that him by affecting me and also our children learn. So let's talk about a few things that we look at happen Lord, other countries. So as you look in the United States, and this was done in 2019, and saw that, you know, on an average, time them come low, look, look, low media, you find them that on an average, a person am spending about three, uh, six hours and 35 uh, minutes so if you look at the TV, it's three hours, 35 uh, minutes. Then time you come to the radio, it's one hour, hour, 20 minutes. Then time you come to the newspaper, only 11 magazine. And go down as far as nine minutes. So you find them that our people and those that are bringing come in technology, they spend a lot of time on this area of And so just for putting more clearly that all the teen, teens blame me, now I'll consume him around nine hours of entertainment media per day. Even parents in the United States will consume him eight hours per day. So on average, the adult will spend him about, you know, spend him more time. Time him come low, no sleep, void low screen, low night time. So on an average, if you find them that low America, 65% of their waking hours or consuming media. Because of that, technology come, media come, and we need to talk about them. And not only that, even for checking phones in America, you know, an average person is spending about 80 to 150 times per night for checking to mo um, mobile blam. And so tonight, we like to talk about them now, media, screen, because they've got them now, blue light. And this is a health concern. And so there are a lot of things we can talk about, but let me touch him some that we can deal with them tonight. Just by definitions, you find them that a blue light and part of the visible spectrum, and part of this light, and part of the light, and part of the sun, and part of the light, and part of the torch. So this is part of this blue light. And you find them only that because I've got them higher energy or frequency, you find them that I'm affecting the brain, and that is important for immunity. Just very quickly, you find them blue light. Once you, uh, you know, you take them, touch no more, you touch them, go to prism, where I'm trans, uh, transparent, but you find them now, I'm got them rainbow. And that's, uh, you notice them go blue light low there. In nature, you find them that blue light is part of that visible spectrum. So we are talking about something that am natural, but at the same time, I'm got them dates or lemon, and I mean, need to talk about. So very quickly, me like mentioning a few things about this natural light, and especially this particular uh, frequency, we call them now blue light. You find them that blue light, MGRM now, 
them affect him sleep me, and also them got them potential for causing disease. And that comes from a health news blog at Harvard University. Not only that, you find them that so see me overusing blue light, then them affect him now. This what him call them a bi, bi, biological clock, which is the a circadian rhythm. And I know that all doctors by talk about them, they sometimes all doing health presentations. But I'm affecting now that sleep rhythm pattern slam. And this is important for me not him. So this is just something on this body clock. Body clock, God am create him and then put him within like me and him he must obey. Because him affect him now the way he may live, the length him in his life life, even things like intelligence. They are all affected by this and important. Another thing about blue light that you need for think about as research. I'm telling me, I'm saying, worse research shows that it may contribute to the causations of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. So you find them that uh, blue light would use him or that mobile would sit down for watching about nine hours and got them a negative impact lamp. I'm also good for you just not him, no matter that blue light naturally him for control him now, that la body clock. But time me overuse him through watching TV. Or you may scroll through the screen, scroll through the screen, it does have a lot of impact on that. And because of that, it's important for you, not him, because I'm affecting Piccinini. Now, I mean, I mentioned him, lawyer, now that about him, eyesight. Or Piccinini will concentrate for using blue light or light mobile. I'm often affecting him, and all by God, I'm eye problem as I grow older. So I'm good for me watching that one. Okay, there are a few things that we need to talk about and very quickly, and that is if Piccinini may expose the screen, screen time, you know, two hours, you know, per day, you find them that by them developing headache, by them got them neck, shoulder pain, by them got them eye strain, dry and irritated eyes, these are part of the, the, the negative impact of using a lot of screen time left. And also continue on. I'm also reducing now what we call them now attention span. And this is very important for instructions, very important for listening skill, which by me touch him later on. And also poor behavior. A lot of our children are struggling. In fact, in schools, parents are come. Teachers are managing, you know, classroom time or teaching and learning time just for managing now this behavior. And I'm good for him, not him that one. And also, I'm causing now irritability, which is minimal, piccinini, or hyper, or not, not hard and talk, or jump up and down. All of these are symptoms. So, if you notice him this time, I'm up and look, piccinini blue, and if you use him um, a lot of screen time, I'm good for me to think about him. And also, I'm important for me noting that one of these can affect him, these two immediately, and that is either I'm affecting him all in terms of their academic performance or I'm affecting more in terms of their social interaction. So I'm very important. So very quickly, just noting for you, my parents, no matter what the porn, what you call them, a smartphone, or one that you may scroll them. You by notice him that, so as you scroll down, by you notice my few instructions, Lord, and me put him low blue that you need for noting. The first one is that I'm call them, I'll call them blue light filter. The next one, I'll call them now brightness. Why not put in this too? Because there is danger in the use of uh, screen time. And I'm, I'm affecting me through the blue light. That's why I'll put in that one. Nowadays, because there's a lot of health awareness and conscious, and I'll ask them all to take, for taking responsibilities. So you find them that I'll put in now what I'll call them anti blue light. And these are very important for him in Nottingham Land. And also, even the screens, big screens. That you got them also got them now, this uh, blue light protection um, screen lamp. So, you know, the world is taking actions to it, but I'm not sure about the product, therefore, I'm not mindful about them all beginning to blame. We like just giving you two take home messages, and that is this prevention is better than cure. I'm simply meaning time, I'm taking information slow this week. I'm good for him, act lamp, rather than him leave him until something happens. Like. And last one that we need for not him is the sun. Brain health is a choice. And we believe him that this week as you listen, you will make the right choice. Because it's not, if we leave God, hopefully things will work well. And finally, for tomorrow's night, you come along. 
This Bible talk about media and how them affect him. Attention time, which is important for me parents, and also important for our teachers as all well, educating beginning blimi. me. May God and bless me, me, and thank you very much. It's another privilege, Lord. Come back and share the word of God tonight. And I believe there are people where you watch come from the provinces, from the western province, from Temotu, and then Lomalaita, here around Lohoniara. There is a group where I'm stopped around Lo, uh, Lo Alligator Creek, Lo area of Peter Sanol, and area of Rogers. And just lo today, I received a call from a friend where I have say there is a group of Western Province, Lo Egolo. In fact, I forgot the name, but me understanding that this community is called Aga Gana Community. Brothers and sisters, if you're joining me Willow tonight, I believe you have chosen the right place to be, and God by me blessing you as in fellow go inside my study tonight. Last night's study, we dwell on the to topic, Jesus, the Son of God. And I believe without what Jesus did, you need to follow by no stop today. We understand that Jesus is the Son of God. And God him this title as described inside the Bible simply because Adam, the first Son of God, him failed. When Adam, God, him, he created him, God created Adam so that Adam can fully reflect the image of God. But Adam chose to disobey God. Hence, that perfect image that God, him, he created him, brothers and sisters, was tainted by sin. And so every human being, when so come out from genealogy of Adam, the Bible said, all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. But that's, that's not to worry about, brothers and sisters, because right after the fall, there is this amazing prophecy where I'm telling you me that redemption will come through an offspring. Redemption will come through one man. As in the book of Romans, I'm talking about him. My friends, through one man, sin came into the world. And the Bible tells us that through one man, redemption came. Redemption came to solve him this whole problem of sin, as in Tola Herem last night. Oh yes, Jesus had to come down into our human experience so that he can pave a way out from this cobweb of sin. So that each one of us, when fella listen Lord tonight, wherever you are, whatever circumstance where you're inside right now, yes, Jesus has established that pathway where you can follow him so that we can be able to be saved. This great God has a plan when there is no way this great God steps in to redeem lost humanity. Tonight's message, me title them, The Final Empire. Before we proceed further, you will listen to wherever you are listening, maybe inside the car, inside the home, or inside the downlink sites, pray inside the heart as we begin with a prayer tonight. Father in heaven, thank you Thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. And above all, thank you for your grace, your saving grace. Where I'm giving me for the hope, Lord. As we just about, Lord, let's study another subject from your word. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will be with us in a special way. Teach me for the Lord, Lord what you like for me for the Lord, Inside the word, please, as we leave today in anticipation of your soon return. Be with all of us as we will study word word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. The final empire. This idea of a Messiah and a kingdom has always been the focus of the Jewish nation. In fact, the Jewish nation are still looking for that Messiah. The belief blog, there is going to be a Messiah, a military ruler that is going to come out from Mesopotamia. This ruler came now by leading this Jewish nation out from the bondage under the leadership of the Roman Empire, my friends. And even until today, they are still looking for that, that promised Messiah. You saw the inside the first century, in fellow understanding, as in fellow studying last night, that Jesus is the promised Messiah 
according to the Old Testament prophecies, Jesus had become, Bible let me tell him, that Jesus was incarnated. In fact, the coming of Jesus is the fulfillment of all the biblical prophecies inside the Old Testament. But man, I tell you, even at the presence of Jesus, in fact, inside the Bible, John chapters 1 and verse 11, Bible, let me state him clearly. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Okay, no sabe? In fact, when Jesus was born, Lord, that fell a manger inside of Bethlehem. Bethlehem was sleeping at the birth of Jesus Christ. Only the shepherds in the field, Lord, awake. Lord, witness him now. This melodious song by the angels as they welcome the birth of this newborn king. Sadly, it's sad to say that Bethlehem is sleeping. Or at not ready to welcome him, the birth of this Messiah. And so all throughout the history, the Jewish nation is still looking for that Messiah. In fact, the second century AD, when Simon Bar-Kochba led this revolt against the Roman government and the Roman emperor at that time, my friends, I've got to think that these men, who is a self-proclaimed Messiah, they think that he is going to be the Messiah. Then, the fifth century AD, there is another one who claimed himself to be a Messiah by the name Moses of Crete. It's interesting. As I've got to come up, I've got to proclaim him to be that promised Messiah that the Jewish nation I've got to look forward for. The seventh century, my friends, there is also an unknown Messiah where history has no record him. But according to the Kuzistan Chronicle Records, him tell him that there is a self-proclaimed Messiah in the seventh century. The Jewish nation got still hope for a Messiah that will establish a kingdom in the eighth century. There is this claimed religious Messiahs. For example, Obidai Abu. Yagdan, that's sometimes referred to as the shepherd of the flock. He claimed himself to be Jesus, where he's supposed to be shepherding the flock. And people are going to look up to him. There is another self-proclaimed Messiah that is by the name Serene. He is also one of those self-proclaimed Messiah where arose him hope of the Jewish people. Then also the 13th century AD, a person by the name Abraham Ben, Samuel Abu Lavia, Nisan Ben. These are promised messiahs. These are self-proclaimed messiahs. Where would I come up and arouse him hope for this nation that is still even today looking for a messiah that will establish that kingdom. Even in the 15th century AD, there is this person by the name Moses Botarel. And in fact, Moses him claimed to be a sorcerer. That's interesting. He claimed to perform miracles. And so, him making people look, look strong to him. Could this be the Messiah? They forgot that the first century AD, as prophesied by the Bible, Jesus came already. Jesus was the promised Messiah. And he is still the Messiah, brothers and sisters. Time him beginning that Messianic ministry. And we are his Messianic people today. You see, this expectation and even run through the 19th century, come him the 20th century. Inside the 16th century, people like Asa, David, Solomon, these are self-proclaimed Messiah. And so people are still looking for, the nation is still looking for that Messiah, whereby him establish him an earthly kingdom, an earthly kingdom, whereby gain him supremacy and people by look, look, look him. You know, my friends, earthly struggle for supremacy, him common yeah, the world today. Superpowers are fighting. To be recognized. You saw a one fellow seminar where Jesus and me hold him. In fact, people come, time ago to hear him now that Jesus is going to present a presentation to the newly ordained pastors and disciples of him. And people heard about this man Jesus. So they come from all directions. Oh, gotta come. But we like for you notice him now what Jesus and me say. In his opening remarks, time he addressed him to the disciples and knowing that people were there, lo witness him. And people came with preconceived mindsets. People asked him the question, could this be the Messiah? What now plan for him? What is his strategy? And me like for you notice him tonight, brothers and sisters. Amazing how Jesus opened that seminar. Bible, let me record him inside 
law, Matthew chapter 6, verse, verse 33. Those well-known verses inside the Bible. Let me say here, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Oh, my friends, the Jewish nation are looking forward for a Messiah that will establish an earthly kingdom. Here, Jesus opened up His message by saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That is the priority of Jesus tonight. If you are listening, the priority of Jesus is for each one of us. When fellow listen, come look at downlink sites, wherever you are, Jesus wants to establish a heavenly kingdom and He wants you to be part of it. So I ask the question. This is the key question of presentation, Blaine fella. The question is, why do we need to seek first the kingdom of God? In order to answer that question, we like to take him now. Mind blame or study blame fella tonight. Why do we need to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Why? Come with me to the book of Daniel, chapter Hemi, chapter 2. Follow me now. This is an amazing story that will tell you, that will give an answer to why Jesus draws the attention of his listeners to the kingdom of God. People might ask the question, what is the kingdom of God? Why is it important? Follow me now as into our journey through our study tonight. The book of Daniel, chapter Hemi, chapter 2. Now, Daniel, chapter 2 is a story about a king who had a dream. Inside Lord Daniel, chapter 2, verse, verse 1 now. Bible him saying, now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. So this king had a dream in the night. You saw him come on for him, he got him dream. But this dream is no ordinary one, as you will, as you will later on notice. Bible, let me continue to say inside the verse 1. Time him, he got him this little dream. He had this dream. His spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Oh, my friends, this must be one interesting dream because time he saw this dream when he awoke, him worried to mass. What's so special about this dream? The sad thing about this dream is that every details of the dream yeah, was, my friends, taken away from his mind. That makes it difficult. And so he was troubled. King Nebuchadnezzar was troubled because of the dream that he had last night. And so Bible, let me tell him, he called the wise men inside the kingdom of Babylon. These soothsayers, these wise people, the people whom he trusted. And so you will come. Come and tell me this dream that I had last night. You know, very interestingly now, Bible, let me say, verse 4, inside the chapters 2. In the book of Daniel. Okay, the turn around and say, Lord, this is king. O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. Verse 9, him say, Never got this time, look strong, Lord. In fact, that statement that the wise men made, well, I'm going to say, Lord, king, you tell me, fella, this is a dream. It came, in fact, him igniting anger, Lord, this is ancient king. And you know what he said in verse 9? Tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. You fall now tell me this is a dream, so that me can be assured that yes, since by you fall telling me the detail of the dream, you can also tell me the meaning. Oh, my friends, to which this wise man inside the Babylon replied, and they would say, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter, no any man. Who can be able to tell you your dream, let alone to reveal the meaning of this dream? Oh, follow me very closely now. Inside the verse 12, Bible him say, For this cause the king was angry and very furious, and he commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Let me tell you, during the Babylonian times, King Amos and God, yeah, what he said, you must follow. Him. And if you not follow, him, it will cause him anger. And if he gave, gives his command, then dynamo next thing. My friends, he commanded that every wise man inside the Babylon must be killed. You know, rich, a new semi rich him. One wise man that is called Daniel. And let me tell you this that Daniel is not a psychic, but Daniel is a wise man recognized inside the kingdom of Babylon. In fact, Hemi, ask him now, this fellow leader of the gods, please, if you can take me to the king. So that when we ask him, King, look, give him me time. 
so that we can be able to seek God. And I believe inside the heart of say, God of heaven will reveal the dream. So the king gave Daniel time. I am respecting Daniel too much. That night, my friends, Daniel let me sleep. The bed blow him. And then God revealed the details of the dream. And also the meaning of the dream. And so Daniel came with excitement before the king. The verse 23, Bible, let me say, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom, might. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 28, them say, there is a God in heaven. Daniel acknowledged him, yeah? So verse 28, them say, there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. God no more himself telling you this is a dream, O king. And he alone can be able to reveal the meaning. It was made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will begin, be in the later days. Him showing me. God showing you what by me happen in the future. And then Daniel began to tell the king the dream and its meaning. The verse in verse 31 of chapter 2 in the book of Daniel and say, You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. This great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome. Verse 33, let me say here, verse 32 and 33. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its, partly, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. And verse 34, I'm saying, you watched while a stone was cut out, this is interesting, without hands, which stuck, struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floor. That is the dream where Daniel had revealed him now the details of it to the king. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. Verse 35, And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Verse 36, listen very carefully now. This is the dream, Daniel, let me say, as he looked firmly into the eyes of this expectant king, as he look, look now, and he listened attentively, and as memory blames start to come back, as Daniel unfold the dream that was hidden from this ancient king, King Yahem start for smile. He start for smile because he knew that Daniel is saying the right thing, the details, that Daniel and reveal him are the exact details of the dream that this king had been looking that previous night. Daniel went on, verse 36, and say, This is the dream. Now we, and this is the interpretation, interpretation now, we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. Notice in one time me now, verse 37 and verse 38, Daniel and begin. Lord, tell him the king about the meaning of this dream. Him say, you, O king, are king of kings. You are this head of gold. You are this head of gold. Him tell him king Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, him listen. And you know, him think about him himself ever. And as Daniel foretells the meaning of the dream, him say, that head of gold, why you look him, Lord, this image. Head, Lord, this image, him gold. Come down, Lord, shoulder. And the ties of this image, my friends, the chest of this image is silver. Come down, the ties is bronze. Come down, the leg of him now. Him now, him iron, my friends, mix one time clay. And so he begin, the verse 37 and verse 38. You, O king, is the head of gold. You know, my friends, inside the history, that head of gold him representing Babylon. Babylon him exists from 605 to 539 BC. Archaeologists confirm that. That this ancient city have actually existed just as the Bible has predicted. In fact, I would uncover them. Some of the remains of this ancient kingdom where once upon a time have flourished under the leadership of these kings, such as King Nebuchadnezzar. You have inside the Babylon this beautiful hanging garden where, in fact, this Babylonian king have built him. Because wife Blahem, wife Lomidia, 
Him come from a place and she loves flowers. Place where he come from got him stuck of beautiful flowers. And so in order to please his wife, Nebuchadnezzar, he built him now the hanging garden that is known today. He built him for median wife, Blahem. My friends, Babylon is 10 miles. That is around 16 kilometers. That is around him, Babylon Naya, 16 kilometers. Man, that one by you walk about around him, by you tied there. In fact, if you compare him, this, this uh, distance around him, Babylon, compare him one time, Rome. Babylon is 16, 10 miles. Rome is 6 miles, which is around 9.6 kilometers. And then compare him one time, Athens. Athens him 4 miles, which is around 6.4 kilometers. This is a huge city. And did you know what? One of the attractions inside the temple here is the, uh, is the temple or attraction inside the Israel kingdom is the temple of Maduk. And the temple of Maduk, historian says that it is 3,000 feet high. And that is around 91 meters high. And inside the Israel temple of Maduk, that temple alone contains 18 tons of gold. Man, or look up the Israel God Maduk. And in fact, they say that the throne alone where God Maduk can sit down on top is six tons made of six tons of gold. That is interesting to note. And so, Bible him say here now, I'm continue on. So him tell him King Nebuchadnezzar, this head of gold, him representing Babylon. And my friends, history confirms the existence of Babylon just as Bible him foretell him. Then he may follow through. Daniel chapter 2 and verse, verse 32. Bible let me say, it's chest and arms of silver. And we went on to say, Lord, verse 39. After you, we say, Lord Nebuchadnezzar, but you not stop all the way. There's going to be another kingdom. After you shall arise another kingdom. And so the second kingdom that is represented by the, soul, the soldier of, 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 of silver and this fella, this fella breast of silver is none other than the, the Medo-Persian kingdom. And the Medo-Persian kingdom have existed after the Babylonian kingdom from 539 to 331 BC. And God, my friends, let me predict him inside the Bible, the leader of this Medo-Persian kingdom named Cyrus. Let me predict him 150 years before Cyrus was born. Bible, let me say, Isaiah 45 verse 1, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. My friend Cyrus, let me lead him come be the Persian army. And Lord, October 13, 539, my friends, as recorded inside Lord, Daniel 5, Daniel 5, let me say that the army of the Babylonian kingdom, Ogata, fished inside. In fact, one theologian, Pastor Mark Finley, say, as the wine was flowing, the music was playing, long robed men held close, lavishly dressed Babylonian women in the midst of the drunken debauchery. Yes, the enchanting music and the seductive immorality. God interrupted Belshazzar's fist. A bloodless hand brought upon the world. Lord, warn him now, this will a Babylonian kingdom, just as the Bible has foretold. God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. You have been weighed in the balances and found one thing. Yes, while that is going on, right outside the Babylonian worlds, the Middle Persian kingdom of a dive him now the river Euphrates that runs under the Babylonian kingdom. And October 13, 539, my friends, of the much underneath, and they took that city by surprise. All these archaeologists. Oh God, discover them inside the Cyrus Cylinder. This Cyrus Cylinder contains all the details of how the Middle Persian Kingdom are going to come and defeat him. This is a Babylonian Kingdom. Confirm what the Bible said. The verse 39, let me say, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule all the earth. So you have that kingdom of Babylon, which is gold, that kingdom of Middle Persian, which is silver. And this third kingdom is the kingdom of bronze, where I'm representing now this is a kingdom of Greece that existed from 331 to 168 BC. You know, historians said, leading the charge, Alexander the Great, ardent and brave, 
fights the Persians. One historian went on to say, I am persuaded that there was no nation, city, no people where his name did not reach. There seems to me to have been some divine hand presiding both over his birth and his actions. Oh, I tell you, God is in control of these changes throughout history. He is in control. Alexander the Great, where him led him the Greek army, led his armies with their bronze armor, with their helmets of bronze and breastplates of bronze, seals of bronze, handled swords of bronze. The Greek armies dominated the world, my friends. So you have the Babylonian kingdom. You have the Middle Persian kingdom. Then you have the Greek kingdom. And Bible, let me say here now, notice one time me. Daniel chapters 2 and verse 40. Interpretation, let me continue. One thing that amazes me about the Bible is that the prophecies that are fulfilled, let me fulfilled exactly as God has foretold. We can trust the Bible tonight. The Bible contains the footprints of God. The Bible contains evidences where should be the foundation of our choices, of our faith in God. The Bible is accurate. And so, interpretation may come. There is going to be another fourth kingdom. So if you have Babylonian kingdom, where may come up from 605 to 539 BC. Then let me go down. Middle Persian kingdom may come up from 539 to 331 BC. Then let me go down. Then you have the Greece kingdom, where may come up from 331 to 168 BC, and archaeologists, historians confirm the existence of those kingdoms just as in Bible, and we predict him. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, the book of Daniel, chapters 2, continue of verse 40. Strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes everything. Ma, this must be a strong kingdom because. This is the kingdom of iron. My friends, law history, it was discovered that this kingdom of iron is none other than the kingdom of Rome. The kingdom of Rome existed in 168 BC to AD 476 or mid-century AD. That's the leg of iron. And let me tell you, Rome is invincible for 500 solid years. No nation can be able to stand against Rome at that time, it seems as though Rome is the superpower from that period, from 168 BC to AD 476. I tell you, a historian by the name Edward Gibbon, inside this little book, The Decline and the Fall of the Roman Empire, this is what he said in describing this iron or this kingdom of Rome. He said, the images of gold silver or brass that might serve to represent the nations and their kings were successively broken by the iron monarchy of Rome. You saw Edward Gibbon is not a Christian. He's not a fan of the Bible. But what now him tell him? Him tell him exactly as what the Bible said. Yes, this kingdom, the kingdom of Rome, that kingdom of iron, very interestingly, Milaglo also highlighted tonight. It was in the days of Rome that Jesus tonight was born. Oh, I tell you, this tells me, this testify that this God of ours is in control. So time under the rulership of this kingdom of Rome, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. You know the three wise men from the east are going to come. I would like to look him now. Follow him this will star. And over the Kamla Jerusalem, and they were expecting the Jerusalem church to show them where this king is going to be born. You know, the king at the time him said, Please, you you will tell me where now this will a king him born so that by me go worship him. But he had other intentions. But yes, Jesus was born during that time. Joseph and Mary fled from an oppressive Roman Empire, traveled down to Egypt. One time, baby Jesus. Jesus was tried by the Roman governor, and crucified by the Roman soldiers, my friends. Let me tell you, during the time, the Roman Empire seems to be invincible. From the Atlantic Ocean, Tamlo Rome, to the Persian Gulf, they conquered nations after nations, 
of the nations. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 41, let me say, Whereas, let me continue with this prophecy, Whereas you saw the feet and the toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. So the head of gold is Babylon. Then come down the silver, this breast of silver and the shoulder of, of silver is this Medo-Persian kingdom. Then come down the ties of bronze is this Greek nation, my friends. Come down the feet of iron, my friends, and represent him now. This strong Roman Empire that is, seems to be invincible. But the Bible went out to say, the verse, verse 41. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. So you come down, if you like to explain it, you come down, Lord, to follow feet, to follow leg, Lord, this fella, this fella, this fella, this fella image, it contains ten fingers. That ten represents the division. This kingdom will be divided. This Roman Empire will be divided, Bible, let me tell them. It will be divided into ten kingdoms. And so the barbarian tribes were going to attack him, Western Europe, in the middle of the fourth century AD, my friends. Oh, God, divide him now, this fellow kingdom. Just as what the Bible had foretold. What now, him tell him? Daniel 2 and verse 43. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere, adhere to one another. Just as iron does not mix with clay, my friends, Rome or Europe since then, tried to unite, but was unsuccessful. They tried to unite through two things, through marriage and through conflict. Very interestingly, the marriage between Napoleon of France and Louis of Austria, that is an attempt to uni unite this kingdom of Europe. But man, what God and me tell them, my friends, no any man whereby you nap, no changing. Bible, let me tell them very clearly, verse 43, let me read this again. They will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Charles V, him try to unite him. Salmain, him try to unite him. Napoleon, him try to unite him. My friends, but him no nap. Inside, Lord General Blam say there will be one Europe. There will be one currency. There will be one language. There will be one government all over Europe. But you know what? In the Battle of Waterloo, inside Lord General Blam during his defeat, sadly, Napoleon him say, Oh God Almighty, it's too much for me. My friends, the Bible said it. No anyone by you twist him. The Bible's prophecy is accurate. They will mingle with the seed of man, but they will not adhere to one another. There is this divided Europe where from mid-century AD, let me go until the present time, Europe has never been united. Those known leaders, okay, try to unite him, but okay, no nap. Hitler, try to unite him, but no nap. Motoblahem, one people, one empire, one leader, tried to establish a kingdom, but no nap. My friends, follow me very closely, Lord, tonight. In fact, this is a flag, the European flag, where we contain him, this is a slogan, many voices, one people, is an emphasis to unite the kingdom of Europe. But my friends, the Bible prophecy and still stand, and the prediction, the prophecy already fulfilled, as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of man. But they will not adhere to one another. Just as iron does not mix with clay, Babylon come up and go down. Middle Persian kingdom and come up and go down. Greece kingdom and come up and go down. The Roman kingdom and come up invincible as it seems during those days. But it became a divided Europe. I ask tonight as until I come to a close, is there another empire? Is there going to be another kingdom? If you are listening tonight, this is an important question that spells out the message for tonight. Listen very carefully now. Bible, let me say, Lord Daniel chapter 2, verse 34, and this is the punchline of our message tonight. You listen, Lohem. You watch while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image 
on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Notice him now. I ask the question, what now this will rock when fall down thumb and they mismass him this will image? I tell you tonight if you are listening now, this rock is the rock of ages, none other than Jesus Christ when fell a harem last night. Jesus Christ will establish a kingdom. The Bible said, no, Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Do you hear that? If you are listening tonight, God blind fellow heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. No wonder the opening the message blind fellow tonight. I ask the question, time Jesus, let me present him that seminar to the newly ordained apostles and the listeners who came with preconceived ideas and ought to come expecting Jesus to talk about that earthly kingdom where Jewish will be that supreme nation to their dismay. Jesus opened that seminar according to Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Jesus, let me mean him. And let me tell you tonight, if you listen, Tom, wherever you are, Jesus, come, come, blow him, is not to build an earthly kingdom. Jesus came to establish and to develop a people that is fit for his heavenly kingdom. Oh, my friends. Bible, let me tell him, Lord, inside Lord Daniel 2 and verse 44, it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Earthly kingdoms will soon come to pass. But this kingdom that Jesus wants us, Lord, focus, Lord, him, is a kingdom that will last forever because it will be established by Creator God Himself, the one who hangs the worlds in space, the one who created this universe, is the one that will establish a kingdom that will reign forever. Oh, I love Revelation 11, verse 15, them say, And there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever. I'm looking forward for that day. That day when pain will be erased. That day when death will be no more. That day when we will be free. I love the song that the group sang tonight. Heaven is a place where we will be free. We will be free from the bondage of sin. We will be free from the pain and the suffering. We will be free from this pandemic and any other pandemic whereby we come to the future. Heaven is a kingdom that God will establish tonight. Are you ready, my friends? That's the question. Are you ready? You know, there is during the Liberian Civil War, there is a pastor where he come and he me, me preach to a group of students. And he me preach and he quote now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. You know, the people of the library are going to suffer him now, slaughter. A lot of people were killed. And so I'm quoting this text, look like at the students and say, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet of God. Listen very carefully now. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we who are alive shall caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And I love this last line. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Time him me quote him this little text. One fellow student, let me hands up. Pastor. Pastor. What now this will sound? What are the exact words where Jesus by me sound him? Because you say inside of this little text where Bible let me tell him now that the Lord will descend from heaven with a sound. Oh, my friends, what will he say? What will he say when he shouts? Mind blood, this will a teacher, this will a pastor. He me raised here and there. He me like a talent student here. Forget him no more. He me don't have to explain him. Go Bible beyond what the Bible said. But he thought about the suffering. He thought about the hungry beggars. He thought about those who suffered. He thought about the pain that the African people are going through. He thought about the pain that the world is suffering right now. What will be the best answer? What will be the exact sound of Jesus when he descends the clouds of glory to take his loved ones go home? My friends, he responded to that question. And you know what him tell him? And me interested in what this old pastor him tell him to that student. He said, Jesus by him say, enough. Oh, enough of suffering. Enough of starvation. Enough of terror. 
enough of drugs and addictions, enough of being enemies, enough of lives trapped in hopelessness, enough of sickness and disease, enough of pain, enough of pain. This is our God, my friends. If you are listening tonight, Jesus by me come back and Jesus is going to end this world of pain. That's why you may ask this fellow question. Why the kingdom? Why the kingdom? Brothers and sisters, Jesus and me clarify, and I clarified at the beginning. Jesus and me say, he looked firmly into the eyes of these people who are listening and let me say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. My friends, the kingdom of God will be the final empire. Jesus and say tonight, if you are listening, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Listen very, very carefully, brothers. And all these things shall be added unto you. Why seek ye first? Gold him go down, silver, bronze, iron, and clay. It's my prayer tonight. You serve everything in the world there by the value. But the kingdom of God will stand forever. It's my prayer that you make that decision or decide to follow Christ now before it's too late. Let us pray. Father, be with us tonight. Help us to prepare for that kingdom. Before like Lord, save inside the kingdom, you Heavenly Father. Bless our brothers and sisters around so that we can make the right choice to be prepared when Jesus comes. This is our prayer in Jesus' name.